Hello, welcome to the North Star Controller PSEP Provisioned LSPs Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After successfully completing this Learning Byte, you will be able to use the North Star Controller to deploy a PSEP Provisioned Label Switched Path. The North Star Controller is capable of dynamically provisioning MPLS label switched paths into a service provider or a large enterprise WAN. And one of the protocols that can be used to signal to an MPLS ingress router to instantiate a label switch path is a, path, is a protocol called PSEP, the Path Computation Element Protocol. Now on the routers that you plan to provision as MPLS label switch path ingress routers, those routers require configuration of the path computation element or the PSEP protocol. This is an example of configuring this on a Junos platform in configuration mode under the edit protocols PSEP branch. You define the path computation element you would like this ingress router to interoperate with. And I, I, so you create a PCE, path computation element definition. You specify a name, and this example is just North Star, but it can be anything that, that you desire. But I specify the IP address that I will use to communicate with the North Star controller. I specify the IP address of the North Star controller, in this case 1.30 and the destination port the North Star controller listens on for incoming PSEP connections is TCP port 4189. So if there's any kind of firewall constraints between your MPLS edge routers and a North Star controller, just take that into consideration. And then there's some PSEP knobs that have to be enabled to allow this node to accept provisioning instructions from an external controller, in this case, a North Star controller. And so we set the path computation element type to be active and stateful. This allows the North Star controller to discover existing label switch paths on this node and modify certain attributes of those discovered label switch paths. And then the LSP provisioning knob allows this path computation client daemon, this PSEP client, to accept provisioning instru instructions from an external path computation element, in this case, our North Star controller. And one of the benefits of using the path computation element protocol is it feeds real-time status information back to your North Star controller about the label switched paths that are currently provisioned on this node. And for that information to be passed from you know, the MPLS protocol to the path computation client daemon under the edit protocols MPLS branch, you have to enable the LSP external controller PCCD knob. Right? And so this is the required configuration on the in the CLI of the ingress nodes that are going to receive LSP provisioning instructions from your North Star controller. Now, inside of the North Star controller interface, it's, it's very simple to provision. It's all GUI based and it's all using a web based interface. And so, inside of the uh, North Star controller interface, from the tunnel tab, there's an add button I can select, or from the applications menu, I can select provision LSP. They both bring up the same provision LSP window, and this is where you'll define the attributes of the label switch path that then you would like the North Star controller to deploy to the MPLS ingress node using the PSEP protocol. And I'll demonstrate this process for you. As part of the demonstration, I have an example network that we'll use. It's uh, six nodes altogether. The ones that are going to kind of be interesting to us are probably going to be the VMX1 and VMX2 nodes. These are my MPLS ingress nodes. These are the nodes that I and my network plan to provision dynamic label switch paths to. And so these are the two nodes that I will configure PSEP on and to peer with the North Star controller. So I can discover the label switch paths that exist on the VMX1 and VMX2 nodes and also then provision label switch paths dynamically down to them. I'm going to connect to the VMX1 node now and I'm going to show you that the PSEP protocol is already configured. Okay, this is the VMX1 node. I'm going to run a show protocols PSEP command. And so you can see that just to save time in this learning about, I've already configured PSEP. There's actually a command you can run called show path computation client status that will show you the active status of the path computation client daemon and its status, its connectivity status with an external North Star controller. So in this case, I'm actually lucky that the session that I, the PSEP session I have configured with North Star is up and provisioning is allowed. 
So I'm good on PCEP. I also want to show you the MPLS protocol stanza here. There are no existing label switch paths provisioned on this node, but I am going to demonstrate provisioning one with the North Star controller, and then we'll return back to this interface. And I want you to see that PSEP provision label switch paths are not stored in, the, in this node's configuration file, right? Uh, these are ephemeral label switch paths. Uh, they're up, they're active, but you just won't see them in the local devices configuration file. So that's our current status on the MPLS ingress node VMX1. I'm going to connect to the North Star controller interface now. Okay, this is our North Star controller administrative interface. Here's the topology map that I was referencing back in the lab diagram that I was uh, I mentioned when we were looking through the slides. And here's my VMX1 node on the left-hand side. Uh, here's my VMX2 node, and these will be transit. The, the VMX, the P1, the P2, P3, and P4 are going to be our MPLS transit routers. And so in, inside of the, uh, the topology panel, I can use the tunnel tab to provision a label switch path. As I showed you earlier, I can click the add button. It brings up the provision LSP window. And there's a couple different provisioning methods that are supported. There was another learning byte that I created on NetConf label switch path provisioning. So, so watch that one. This one is going to focus on PSEP. So I'm going to select uh, PSEP from the drop down menu. And now I, I must give my label switch path a name. I'm going to build this label switch path uh, between VMX1 uh, to the VMX2 node on the, uh, I'll give it a name, PSEP, right? So I can identify it. Now the, the next part is to simply uh, specify the ingress and the egress node. So I'm going to select for node A, you know, VMX1. That'll be my MPLS ingress node. So this is the node that the North Star controller will provision the, the instructions to, to instantiate, to signal this uh, label switch path. So the ingress node will be VMX1. I want this label switch path to egress on the VMX2 node on the other side of the diagram. Uh, the, you can... It's up to you how this LSP should be signaled once the instructions are deployed to VMX1. We're in this learning byte going to use RSVP. There's another learning byte that specifies how to provision using uh, SR, segment rod and label switch path. So look for that learning byte as well. You can specify primary paths, secondary paths, standby paths. So there, it's very flexible in the, in the redundancy, the types of label switch paths that this thing can provision. Very, very flexible, very, very complete solution. You can specify a name for the path. Let's specify a bandwidth. Let's assign 100 megs bandwidth, reserve 100 megs of bandwidth for this label switch path. There's setup, uh, hold priorities. By default, the label switch path metric is calculated from the IGP path that this label switch path is signaled to use, but you can specify a custom metric. There's also a path tab. There's several tabs that you can use to customize how this label switch path is signaled across your WAN. By default, it's signaled to the IGP shortest cost path. That's the route this label switch path will be provisioned for across your network. But I can specify you know, required paths, preferred paths. So let's, let's, let's change uh, some options here. So I'll specify a preferred path. Um, I hit the drop down arrow here, and I can specify on a hop by hop basis the route I would like this label switch path to take across my network. So, and as I select a hop, you know, you, you can see the forwarding path being built. Let's click the plus to add another hop in the path. And let's go up to the P3 node. Move this out of the way so we can kind of watch the rest of the path be built. Let's add another, you know, hop in the path. And let's go down to P4. So I can see the paths again being highlighted. And then we'll, we'll terminate this label switch path on the uh, on the VMX2 node, right? And so that's the path that I would like the North Star controller to compute and then compile a set of explicit route objects and then signal that to the VMX1 node using PSEP. So then the VMX1 node can use RSVP to signal this label switch path. So that's what we defined so far. And here's the path I would like that label switch path to take. So I can go to the advanced path and, and, and Specify additional routing constraints on this label switch path. Certain link colors or administrative groups can be defined, or certain diversity groups can be used to specify label switch path redundancy. By default, how is this label switch path routed? Well, remember, by default, it's routed based on the IGP shortest cost path through the network. But we can route our label switch paths based on administrative weights, based on mileage distance based on delay 
So, you know, your customers have different requirements when they approach you for, for WAN services. And for some customers, latency is the most important thing, while others, you know, bandwidth is... So we, you get a lot of customization options, and the North Star Controller is capable of computing forwarding paths that meet your customers' requirements and then signaling them dynamically on your network. Let's look at the scheduling tab. This is a nice feature of the North Star Controller in that using PCEP, I can dynamically schedule when these LSPs are actively signaled across the network. By default, if I hit submit, this label switch path is, is signaled to the VMX1, uh, provisioned to the VMX1 node, so it can be signaled. And this LSP, as long as network conditions permit, this label switch path is always active. But I can schedule this label switch path to be active as a one-time event, or I can schedule this LSP to be uh, provisioned and then torn down, you know, daily, multiple times per day. So very flexible scheduling options. And then, so those are my main options. I can also specify, you know, custom properties that would be assigned or combined with these label switch paths so they can be combined with some other type of customer service maybe. And so once I've specified all the properties that I, that I want on my label switch path, I click the submit button. The North Star controller now will calculate the forwarding path of this label switch path, compute a series of explicit route objects, pass them to the VMX1 ingress node for RSVP signal. And in this example, we seem to have a little bit of success. I can see my new tunnel in the, in the tunnel tab. I can see that the operational status of this tunnel is active. I can see once I select the tunnel, the forwarding path matches the forwarding path that I, that I provisioned. I can scroll to the right. And I can see, you know, the recorded route column will show me the, the nodes that, oops, excuse me, I clicked on the wrong part there. It will show me the nodes that this, you know, the forwarding path that this MPLS tunnel is taking through my network. I'm going to connect back to the VMX1 node and, and show you that this LSP is provisioned. Operationally, the status is up, but there is no information about this label switch path in the VMX1 node's local configuration file. Okay, so I've returned to the VMX1 node again, and I'm going to run the same show protocols MPLS command when we were here a little bit earlier. And again, nothing's really changed. Their PSEP provision label switch path, that's one of the unique things about them, are provisioned from the North Star controller and are not placed in this local devices configuration file. But if I do a, a show MPLS LSP, oops. LSP command, I do actually see, let me put a detail on here even so you can get a little bit more information about it. You know, you can actually see the recorded route object in the, in the forwarding path. So it's a lot of the same information that the PCEP daemon on this VMX1 node fed back to the North Star controller. That's how it was visible in that North Star controller administrative interface. So that's an example of using the North Star controller to dynamically provision label switch paths using the PCEP protocol. In this learning by, we use the North Star controller interface to dynamically deploy a PSET provision label switch path. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.